Go. Today my project is on America's school systems and the need for reformation. How smart is America? Now, did you know that America is actually falling behind everyone in national polls when it comes to our education system? We also spend, honestly, way too much money on the education system that's falling behind as well. We also have one of the highest rates of teachers, and they complain the most about low wages. Our spending and funding, this is how it works. Your regional property tax comes in from your local living civilians, and the money goes back to their area, or the district school that they belong to. So it's not really spread evenly. So poor neighborhoods won't get as much income money for their school, which they actually probably need more, while the wealthier areas tend to retain their wealth, and so on. This continues the cycles of poverty and my personal cycle of ignorance. In a recent study, the high school graduation rate topped at 80% for the U.S. in the first time of its history. It's great, it hit a peak at 80, but if its peak's only 80, that should definitely be improved. And they say if we keep this rate, we could probably hit 90% by 2020. I think my plan will speed that up. The U.S. is not even in the top 10 of the highest educated schools or best systems. South Korea being at the top, Finland being one of the more recognized higher ones has dropped in the past couple years. But this also study, they also found that the U.S. reported 17th in 2012, but rose to the 14th in 2014. So some changes have been good. How's Finland stayed on top though? They have the most rigorous curriculum out of all school systems. So the classes are harder, They've learned math a year ahead of what U.S. students have. The quality of education is very level. Poor people get the same amount of education as wealthier students. They don't have much of an advantage. And they keep teaching, just that job of being a teacher, a more sought after and highly rewarding job than most jobs. They provide health and dental, and the schools provide so psychological counseling to their students. Canada's funding surpasses the U.S. by far. I think their form is one to definitely model after. The three provinces have successfully transitioned from a joint provincial local funding system to a provincial level funding system, a system that has potential to promote at least equality, if not equity, in school funding. So we're at least fair. They're also really flexible when it comes to this. It's not that like the national school board is going to direct everything. It's more kept on the local level within the provinces so that they can better and quicker attack problems that they see. Also, a provincial level funding system allows for a more stable and predictable school budget. It also creates a broader tax base than the more traditional system that depends on local property wealth. So this gets rid of the poor neighborhoods staying in poor condition. <coughs> also, their ways and their path of schooling is much, much different. Nova Scotia does not even have an elementary school. Your first 13 years are spent in your elementary and middle school, and then you move on. Whereas the U.S. is just a simple kindergarten, elementary, middle, high school, and college. China has one of the better ones, but I personally think it's because they also have a giant number of students. They have 9.39 million students involved in their system. Theirs is much different, though. We require you to get to at least, what is it, 10th, 10th grade? of high school before you can legally drop out, you are only required nine years of mandatory education, and the success rate of that is 99.7%. So, you know, they got them staying in school. Germans, 
they have a great model too that I learned while I was taking my German class here. They choose what kind of schooling they have during their first two years of what we would have as middle school. They choose whether they're going on to college, getting a blue collar job, or if they just need to stay in school till a certain age. Parents are a huge factor in deciding this. And you have to see your path from start to finish or you must start over. Curriculum flaws. They were adopted in the 19th century. The America now shaping schools reflects the big idea, that of an early area, urban early era. Factory system, standardization of parts, mass production, centralized decision making, and passive worker compliance. This all forms a student body and student mind that is one passive and not aggressive, going with the flow rather than inventing something new, and just your basic education, nothing specialized or interested. And where did we go wrong, you might ask? I think we went wrong by not holding teachers to a higher standard and not making a more sought after job. Most teachers actually quit with after the first three years of teaching. And lately I think it's also been due to the parents not knowing who to blame their child for not paying attention in class or the teacher not being able to teach. I think it's a sad mix of both, but... And also the overly standardized curriculum. But that also begs the question, are we priming our students for college or prison? Come back to this link if you'd like to watch the TED talk on that. How should we fix it? I think we should fix it by changing our tax distribution and following a system more like Canada. And to fix the curriculum, I think we should go with one more like Germany that shows more of the way you will go instead of just let you flopping around in a generalized area until you finally decide which way you want to go. I also think that less power from the national level would be great to keep more level or more power in the local government. And as you can see, Germany's curriculum. This is the oriental stage where you choose whether you are going to the Hauptschule, Realschule, Gymnasium, or Gesamtschule. The gymnasium is the more college prep way. This is for your students that probably have about three. 0.0 or higher, maybe 3.5 or higher, or and take AP classes in a US system. Their classes are more geared towards sending you to college. That's the main road, is that if you go here, you're gonna go to college. The Royal Schule is more of learning more specialized things, but more of like a trade. So you learn how to bake or carpentry or construction. And the Gesamtschule is a little bit more like an American way of doing it. It's all three schools mixed together, so you have a chance to do all of those things. This is my path that I think would work, keeping it the same here except for changing your middle school grades from fifth to seventh grade. And then instead of just going to one high school where everyone's just piled in and it's the masses and, well, I want to do this and I want to do that, you choose which way you want to go. You either go to a college prep school, which would get funding through the state or its tax, or its property tax um, region, and then also be privately funded by companies that want to actually hire these students to get out of college so that they can provide services, equipment, textbooks, possible curriculums, if that was one of their options. Career pathways would be more for the students that just ah, don't really like school or don't really care to be here. They have something, I think, sort of like this, um, where students take classes online at the Versailles Academy. But this one would be geared more to just a simple job where you go to school, come out, you'll be making a small, decent, blue-collar living, and a nice job, probably like firemen or police. And then the liberal arts school would be publicly funded, but I would prefer that one to be a little bit more privately funded as the curriculum would consist more of arts in your writing, visual, musical, and then the core subjects of your history, math, science would all relate more to the arts. The thing is college gives more back. 
to the society than I think arts do. So I think that they should be more privately funded by government if they want new art in their park. Give them the money and let the students do it.